trying an egg sucking leech today. This is a very simple leech pattern with a, a slight ad, adaptation um, with the bright egg in front. This became very popular for steelhead fishermen, at least that's my understanding, uh, where they, they gained their popularity, even though I have never heard of anybody actually seeing in the water a leech attached to an egg. I think it's more the bright color that attracts them, the, the leech pattern in the water that uh, attracts the fish to it. But it's essentially a woolly bugger with a longer shanked hook and some sort of bright bead on the front. Whether it's a chenille bead or whether it's an actual weighted bead or just a plastic or glass bead, that's up to you. But it's a simple, simple pattern. You can make multiple different colors and combinations of the egg sucking leech. This is just a, a basic chenille egg sucking leech and we'll go ahead and get started. begin the egg sucking leech by placing our hook in the vise. This is a Mustad R75 straight eyed hook. It's a 5x long streamer hook. I need a little bit longer streamer hook because I need to keep the actual leech portion of this proportionate because I'm adding in what would be the egg portion on the front. So that's what the reason for a longer shanked hook. You could use a downturned eye hook. That's fine. Uh, debarb the hook and I'm going to attach some lead along the hook shank here. You don't have to do this but I find I like the leeches to sink and swim more towards the bottom depending on how you're planning on fishing this. You certainly don't have to do this. I'm going to put in about 15 wraps of 0 .020 lead wire You can certainly use a lead free if you want to. Smooth all of that off. And I'm going to place it a little forward on the hook shank. I don't necessarily want it in the middle of the hook shank. So I'm just going to move it forward on the hook shank. For thread, I'm using a black Flymasters Plus. It's a larger diameter thread. But for the tail and most of the body of this, I'm, it's easier to go from one end of the hook shank to the other by using a larger thread than a smaller thread. It saves me wrapping so much. I'm going to attach my thread behind the eye of the hook, anchor it down, and then get to the back of those lead wraps to place a thread dam. Then I'll just go back and forth a little bit. I do want a thread dam on the front. The thread dam on the front is more as a nice transition from the lead wraps. Just anchor all that down, bring my thread about to the point of the hook. Here I'm going to tie in the tail. This is, as I mentioned before, the egg sucking leech is essentially a woolly, woolly bugger with a longer shanked hook and some sort of material as to represent the egg in the front. So we tie this just like a regular woolly bugger. This is a blood quill marabou dyed black. I'm going to collect that together. In this case, with this particular feather, I'm going to go ahead and snip out just the tip of this a little bit. Helps get a little bit fuller tail collect that together and I want a tail about a shank length long. You could go a little bit longer if you want. I'm going to anchor that down, wrapping down the hook shank, come back forward towards the lead wraps and I'm going to use the marabou here to kind of fill in this space transitioning from the lead wraps down to the hook shank. This will help give me a nice smooth body for the chenille. I'm 
with my tail wrapped in, I'm going to attach my hackle. I'm using a Whiting's Bugger Pack in black. This is actually a grizzly dyed black. I'm going to take the hackle, holding it by the tip here. I'm going to stroke these fibers out just to get them a little more perpendicular to the rachis of the feather. And I'm going to anchor that tip in right at the end of the body. For the body, I'm using a rayon chenille in a large size, and this is just a, a black rayon chenille. You can vary some of this up if you want. You could have a black body with, say, a purple hackle or a brown hackle or something, or even a black hackle, and then do a dark olive body. So you can vary these up just like you would a woolly bugger. Pulling some of the fluff out of the chenille. I'm going to anchor the core of the chenille down to the hook shank. And I'm going to bring my thread forward. You have to smooth off any spots. And I'm going to bring my thread forward to about a quarter of the way up the hook shank, maybe a little bit more. Remember, it's easy to crowd the this area here. This is where the egg's going to go. If I bring my thread right here, when I wrap in the chenille, it's going to bump my thread a little bit forward. When I wrap in the hackle, it's going to bump it a little bit further forward. So now I have less room up here for the egg. So when in doubt, go a little bit further back, and then we can easily fill the whole space in with what is going to be our egg. This rayon chenille, sometimes when it comes off the card, will lay flat. It'll kind of be smushed flat. I like to twist this up just a little bit and then run my scissors on it. And what it does is it just kind of fluffs it out a little bit so that as I'm wrapping it, I don't end up with any flat spots. I end up with much more of a uniform diameter body. Each wraps right in front of the other. When you get to your thread, don't, it's tempting to put one more wrap in, don't. Again, you can very easily crowd the egg space on this. So just wrap that in, trim away the excess. Anchor that down. Our hackle is going to be about five or six evenly spaced wraps up the body with one or two more right here to form a little bit of a collar. So I'll put the first wrap right here at the end to get it started and then start bringing them forward. And as I said, when I get right to the end right here, I'm gonna put in a couple or two, three extra wraps just to give myself a little more of a collar. Now this hackle, the barbs on this hackle are a little bit long. I like my egg sucking leech patterns to be a little bit uh, bulkier, to have a little bit more profile to them. So I don't mind that these barbs are just a little bit on the long side. I'm going to wrap my thread forward, smoothing off this area for the egg. And for the egg, you can do different kinds of eggs, different materials for eggs. I'm going to use, this is a fine fluorescent orange nylon chenille. And I like the finer stuff because it allows me to wrap back and forth a little bit on top of each one to get a little more rounded shape to 
the egg. But you could actually even use egg yarn or something like that if you wanted to. I'll tie in the end of the chenille here. Before I do that, I just remembered I want to change over my thread. So two or three turn whip finish here with this heavier Flymasters Plus. And I'm going to switch over to a 6 aught Danville and a fluorescent orange. This just keeps everything up around the egg a nice bright color. Secure that in. You can even, if you want, put in just a little drop of head cement in there to soak in, and that'll help secure things even a little more. Take my chenille. I'll anchor down the core fibers of that chenille. Right in front of the Bane body and the hackles. And then I'll start wrapping it in. As I mentioned, I can, by using the finer chenille, I can go forward and then backward here, pull that nice and tight, and I can get a nice rounded egg to the fly, as opposed to just, um, I guess, looking like an extension of the body. It gives it a little bit more rounded profile. I'll anchor that down, trim away the excess, and then right behind the eye, you don't even have to really make much of a head. It all blends in. I get a five or six turn whip finish in right behind the eye of the hook. Trim away the thread, add some head cement. And that is our egg sucking leech. Something to consider when you're tying these, the black dyes on the hackles, um, I shouldn't say not the hackles, but the chenille and the marabou tend to run sometimes on your fingers. So when you're handling the, the uh, bright chenille, you might consider just being a little bit more careful in terms of how much you handle it. If I'm tying up a dozen or so of these, I'll actually tie them with the tail, the body, and the hackle. And when I anchor that black thread, I'll actually take that out and make the next one. So I make all 12 of them without the egg on here. Because then I can go and wash some of that dye off my fingers. And when I come back, I'm less likely to uh, leave some of the dye on the bright chenille. That is an egg sucking leech. You can actually have a, a thicker, heavier tail if you want, or something you know even sparser. It depends. Some people tie these with the rabbit zonker in for the tail. It's really up to you. If you search around, you'll see all kinds of different ones done with sparkle bodies and, and rubber legged hackles and things like that. Essentially, as I mentioned, it's a woolly bugger with a longer shanked hook and a bright egg on the front. What you choose to make that with is up to you. But it's a good leech pattern, especially for steelhead and some trout. Smaller sizes, I'm certain you could get some small mouth with these and even smaller say 12s and 14s, I'm certain you could get a lot of panfish with these. A simple little leech pattern with a little bright color to it. Hope you enjoyed that. That's the egg sucking leech. Thanks for joining me at the Vice today. I hope you learned at least a new pattern. 
if not a new technique, maybe a tip or trick here and there. If you have any questions about this fly or any of the techniques used in constructing this pattern, please leave them in the comment section down below. If you go to the trouble to ask a question, I'll go to the trouble to answer it. If you'd like to help dressed irons, please share this video with your friends and anybody you think that might enjoy this pattern. Until next time, remember, it's fly tying. If you're not having fun, then you're doing it wrong. <music>